I, in fact, I kept thinking about what, what is a little something that I could give. And, that, and I'm going to give you this message. And so, in fact, I even looked for, for a clever little video like I, like I had on Mother's Day. There's no really good videos out there for Father's Day. So um, that probably says a lot just in itself. Amen. We're going to be uh, preaching out of Hebrews chapter 11, and so you can go ahead and find your way there. Um, uh, and, and here in a little bit, we will, we will start that message. Let's pray as we prepare for this message. Father, Lord God, I thank you so much for this day that we have gathered. And Father, as we turn our attention to fathers and the roles that they have, the impact that they have upon lives, Father. Father, let us remember that that we call you Father. In fact, your word says we cry out to you, Abba, Father. And that, Father, we've got a great example for us to look to. Oh, Father, I just ask that today that you would have your will and your way. May your Holy Spirit, Father, control my heart, my mind, and my tongue. Father, let not, not this be a message from me. Oh, Father, let it be directed from you, even if it's not something on my notes that needs to be said. Father, I just ask that you would, you would deliver this message according to your will and your purpose in this hour. And Father, I ask that that same Holy Spirit moves amongst this group of people and touches them in a very deep and profound way that whenever they leave this place, they can say, I am changed because I've been touched by a holy God. And I ask this in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I tell you, this week as I, as I prepared this message and, and, and I knew that it was coming up, I, I spent some time and I actually just watched I, I watch people normally if i ever go to walmart i i just love to just people watch anybody else do that people watching well, yeah where you just watch people well that's what i did and and i noticed this one guy coming out of a convenience store relatively early in the morning it's about seven o'clock in the morning and he's holding hands with this little boy and he's got curly hair and and that boy comes out holding his dad's hand just jumping up with just full of excitement i don't know what had gone on? Maybe he got a donut when he was in, in the inside. But watching the dad grab this boy and set him up in, into the car seat and lock him in and make sure that he was secure. And I thought about that dad. I wonder if he understands the impact that he's going to have on that, on that young man's life. I watched another dad walking out of, out, of, um, out of Walmart with his child. And I thought, thought the same thing. Then Friday morning, I got up early, went to meet a guy, and where are you going to meet on a Friday morning but Chick-fil-A, right? And so I meet a guy for a meeting at Chick-fil-A early, early uh, Friday morning. I notice a dad and his daughter come in, and they go up and they pay, and the little girl all by herself is carrying the drink and, the, and the whatever she had purchased to eat, and they came and they sat down right beside us, and I, and I got a chance to watch them. And they sat there for the whole time that the girl uh, ate this little meal and never said a word. The dad was on his cell phone the entire time. That this little girl, probably eight years old, was eating her breakfast. And I thought, he probably thought, I did something good today. I took my daughter to breakfast. Probably went to work bragging about what a good dad he had been. I said he never said a word the entire time on a cell phone. Sometimes we ought to take those cell phones and leave them in the truck. I tell you what, I remember having a conversation with my mom. At one point, we talked about having kids, and I remember saying to my mom, and it, it really upset her, I'm thankful for that my mom and dad are here this morning, but I remember telling my mom, uh, it might have been shortly after Candy and I got married, I said, uh, I don't, I don't want to have kids, and it tore my mom up, made her sad. I don't know, Mom, if you remember that conversation, but she didn't like it. And I said, Mom, this world is too bad of a place. I don't know how I made it through, but I did. 
I'm still going. This is a bad place. Why would I want to bring a life into such a terrible, terrible place? My mom said, you have no idea the joy that comes with being a dad. Isn't that true? And I want you to know that there is no, I don't know that there's been a greater joy uh, in this world physically than being a dad. It has been, out of all the billions of people on this earth, there's only two people that get the chance to call me those three little words, dad, three little letters, dad. Only two out of the billions of people. I have had so much enjoyment from the time that my boys were born. November 19th, 1991, and then again on December 1st, 1995, my life changed. And I became a dad to these two little precious, precious boys. And I want you to know that I enjoy some of the most simplest times in life of being a dad. Some of the times that, that most Pope people will, will miss, like the dad that sat at Chick-fil-A. Let me, let me tell you something. Those moments of going to Chick-fil-A and just sitting there and laughing. In fact, it's a joke around my house. If my boys ever ask me, where, Dad, where do you want to go to eat? I am always going to say, let's go to Chick-fil-A. And then I'll say, my boys really love Chick-fil-A. But I love some of, the, some of the moments that most people don't realize. In fact, I don't, I, my boys, I'm sure they don't even understand it. But there are times whenever we will have supper, and when we get the chance to have supper as a family together, and, and we, we have prayer, and then we, we eat. But after the meal, there's times we literally sit there for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes just laughing. Just the four of us, mom and dad and two boys. I still love those moments. I love those, those moments. That, and again, my boys don't even know it, but whenever I'm back and I'm ready for bed and I am just tired and worn out, and all of a sudden they get home and they come back and they will sit in the bedroom and they'll talk. 16, 17, 18 years old. And my boys still want to come back and sit and talk. I love it. I love it. I'm the dad that wants to talk to my boys. In fact, in fact, whenever, whenever either one of my boys call on the phone, I, I will always answer the same way to both of them. I say, hey, buddy. And I just love hearing the reply I get. Sometimes I think that's a beautiful picture of our Heavenly Father who sits there and waits for, waits for His children to finally call through prayer. He's just waiting to hear from you. I wonder if it does his heart joy too when his children just say, Dad, I want to come and talk for a while. Because it thrills me. It absolutely thrills me. I have loved every moment of being a parent, of being a dad. The joy that we've experienced the tears, and the pain. I've enjoyed the applause when applause was appropriate. And you might not understand this, but I even enjoy the spankings when it was appropriate. I know my boys probably don't understand that. <laughs> I am telling you, The job of being a dad is one that is never ending. I don't. It is something that you continue to do from the time you bring a life in and until the time that God calls you home, you are called to be a dad. It never ends. Please understand, I, my dad's here and I am very, very thankful for, for the things that my dad taught me. He has taught me so much. In fact, he will never know all that he has taught me in life. He taught me how to lead a family. How to lead a family. Please understand, whenever, whenever my uh, oldest son was born, I'm literally like 21, 22 years old. 
I don't know anything. And now I'm responsible for this little child. And I look back and say, I'm so thankful that I had a dad that taught me how to lead a family. He taught me how to love. I think about my dad teaching me how to love. By the way that he interacted with people, the way, the way that he tr- taught, the way that he treated my mom taught me how to love. He taught me how to give. I, I remember a time whenever we didn't have much growing up, but I remember somebody was alongside the street, uh, along the road, and this person was down and out, and my dad stopped and bought them, I think it was bologna and a loaf of bread. And we would go without. But he stopped and gave to somebody. My dad taught me how to how to think before I would speak. You ever talk to my dad? Sometimes whenever whenever you're there with him and you'll ask him a question, he'll just sit there for a little while. If you wait long enough, it might be two or three days, (laughs) he will finally come back and give you an answer. But I tell you what, that's a valuable lesson that that I have taken with me that I need to do the same thing. In fact, I want you to know that, that I see in myself so much of my dad. I have watched him, I, I have listened to him, and there are so many ways that I imitate exactly who he is and who he has been. But I also want you to know that now, after having two boys, one uh, 22 and one 18, I now see them imitating me. They act and talk so much like I do. Sometimes, whether we want them to or not. Amen? So get this picture. Get this picture. There's a pattern. I... Imitate what my dad taught me. My kids imitate what I teach them. You see the pattern? Dads, here's the question. Are you living a life that is worthy of being imitated? Do you want your children imitating the person that you are? Because guess what? They're going to. Whether you want want them to or not, they are going to imitate what they learn from you. I'm I'm going to show you three examples in God's Word today of dads and things that I think that dads should be doing um, to to raise their children. And the first one is in Hebrews Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the faith the faith chapter. It, it lists all these, these uh, true saints of God and the faith that they lived out. But inside here, I found some information. I was like, this applies to today's message. And so the first one I want us to look at is Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 and 9. Look at what it says there. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out of the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt uh, in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. I love that song, Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. Any of y'all know that song? I'm not going to sing it to you. Y'all be thankful for that. But I love that song. Father Abraham had many sons. You see, in this, in this picture right here, uh, and again, this is a faith chapter, and it talks about Abraham and the faith that Abraham had. And let me tell you, Abraham had a lot of faith. It took, it took faith for him to do exactly what, what was talked about there. He was led to a place he didn't know where he was going, but he followed God with everything that was in him and followed the direction that God had in his life. But Abraham was also promised his son, and he had to stand upon this promise at, at a very old age that he would have a son. And Abraham was faithful to that calling. 
He was also faithful whenever, whenever, and he demonstrated his faith whenever he took that son that God had promised and had taken him up and placed him upon an altar and was literally going to kill him because that's what God had told him to do. You see, Abraham, Abraham had lived a life of faith. He believed God in everything that he did. But I want you to notice something inside this verse that applies to us today. Look at the, look at the end of verse number 9. Dwelling in tents. He's, he's, they're talking about this faith journey. Dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob. He took on his faith journey through life his son and his grandson. And he let them experience I will tell you, dads, you need to be letting your children go on your faith walk with you. It is important that, that they see, your kids and your grandkids see, that, that you are going on a faith walk with Christ. And they need to hear you talk about where God is taking you in your life. They need to learn from your example. Remember, they're going to imitate you, so let them understand that you're on this faith journey. Here's, an exa- here's some examples of where you might go on a, a faith journey. Maybe God is you're dealing with you about changing jobs. And, and, and you've got to deal with this. Now, I will tell you, most men, most men and most dads, they're going to deal with that. That's a work thing. I've got, I got to deal with it here. Let me tell you something. Why don't you change that thought? Why don't you come home and whenever you gather your kids together, say, I want you to know God's dealing with me about, about changing jobs. I'm going to be praying about this for some time. And kids, I want you to pray with me. Take them on that faith journey with you so that they see in life. My dad, when he made a decision in life, it was a major decision going on, and my dad would call us together and say, hey, kids, I'm getting ready to think about changing jobs and I'm going to be praying about this, and I'm asking you to pray with me. Let them see that that's the way it should be done. Then do this. Go one step deeper. During that time, you're telling them, I'm thinking about changing jobs. It's going to be important in our life. Ask them to pray with you. But then do this. Let them hear you praying about it. Let them hear you pray. They need to know that my daddy prays. And my daddy prays about making a significant change with the job. It was that important. And then guess what? Do this. Whenever you get that answer, that answer that God finally delivers and says either take the job or don't take the job, that you come back and you sit down with your kids and say, hey, kids, I got an answer from God and this is what it said. I'm going to take the job. And then allow them the joy of worshiping and praise for the answer that God has given to you. Amen? See, many times men will say, I'm going to handle this on my own. I'm going to do it on my own. I am telling you, take them on the faith journey with you. I will tell you that, that it is critical that, that as you go down this faith, faith uh, journey in life, that your kids see you literally uh, uh, pouring your life into the study of the Word of God. Your kids need to see you studying God's Word. Why? One, because you love God's Word. Amen? Two, because they're going to imitate everything that you do. Please know this. I I am so thankful for a dad who, who pours his life into the study of God's Word. That man studies God's Word more than anybody I know. And I will tell you that even, even today, I'm 44, 45 years old. I don't know exactly how old. But even today, after all the years of me studying for Sunday school lessons, studying God's Word on my own, and even preparing messages now for the past almost three years, even today, whenever I come to a scripture, I will pick up the phone and I will call my dad and say, Dad, help me understand this verse. You know how I can do that? Because I watched my dad study the Word. If your kids only see you pick up this book 
on Sunday morning, they will think that this is a Sunday morning book. I don't need it any other time. If I've got a question for, sun, for the Sunday morning book, I'll call my dad on Sunday morning because that's the only time my dad opens that book. You should be reading this book every day. And your kids need to see you read this book every day. You see, you're taking your kids on a faith journey. You are taking your kids on a faith journey. And they need to see you on this faith journey in prayer and in Bible study. Look exactly what he said. It said that, that Abraham... They, Isaac and Jacob dwelt in the tents with him. They had taken the kids and the grandkids on the faith journey. They were in the tents with them. They didn't say, hey, kids, you stay over there while I go on this journey in life. Following God. He took them with them. Don't be a dad that says, I'm going to handle it on my own. My kids just need to know that I'm going to make the right decision." Don't be a dad that thinks that by doing that, you're protecting your kids. Let me tell you something. You are protecting your kids by showing them that you're a man of faith and that you study the word of God and that you pray for guidance and direction in your life. That's protecting your kids because they're going to they're going to imitate who you are. I also want you to know this. He said that it, this was his son and grandson. Don't think just because your kids are grown that your job is over. Your kids still need to know what you're doing, and so do your grandkids. Amen? So if you have grandkids, you need to take them in the tent with you as you go on your faith journey, teaching them all along the way what God is doing in your life. Let them be there as you pray and as you study. Next one I want you to look at is in Hebrews chapter 11 there. Look at verse number 20. Another, another dad that gives an example and it affects his kid's life. Verse 20 says this, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. This dad blessed his son. People I want you to know, and by the way, again, I told you this is for moms and dads both. Every bit of this applies to moms just the same way as it does to dads. You need to be very careful about the words that you say when you direct them at your kids. I am telling you what, all you got to do is walk around inside of Walmart for just a very short time and you will hear, hear parents that are literally spewing out of their mouth curses and not blessings upon their children. You better be really careful about what you're saying to your kids. If you say statements like this, you'll never amount to much. Guess what? They might just live up to your expectation and never amount to much. If you, I am telling you, I, I have walked through and I have heard some of the most craziest things that people would say. You are just a constant troublemaker. Those words come out and directed at a child. And all of a sudden, that child gets in their mind. I'm just a constant troublemaker. That's who I am. Just last week, we watched a video whenever Brother Jim Chastine preached the message to the Gideons. And this guy said, he said, my mom, my mom told me that I'd either be dead or in prison by the time I was 21. And I, I lived up to her expectation. And at 21 years old, he was in prison. Be very, very careful, parents, about, about the what you say to your kids. You need, to be, you, need to be, you need to be saying words of blessings upon them. In fact, you need to be praying blessings upon your children. Here's how it works. Bless, you, need to, you need to literally pray blessings upon them and, 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 and blessings such as, I, I would ask that this child, name them by name, would be blessed with the love of Christ. And that they would, and that, and that the love of Christ would be so powerful in their life that, that it would overflow and impact other people's lives. You see, that's a, that's a prayer of blessing upon them. That, you, that they would be blessed with the love of Christ that influences other people. 
You might want to pray the blessings of the fruits of the Spirit. Oh, Father, I have this child here before me. And I want to pray that they would be kind, meek, and gentle. Teach your kids. Say, instead of saying, you will always, always be a rotten child. Say, hey, I'm praying that you will be kind and you'll be meek. Speak words of blessing, not curses upon your children. I understand, parents. I understand you will get mad and, and anger starts to come with inside of you. And whenever it does, let me tell you, you better stop and control your tongue. Control your tongue. And, and, and you can pray. By the way, whenever I was talking about praying for the, the blessings of the fruits of the Spirit for your children, whenever you're praying the, the blessings of the fruits of the Spirit, you're going to say kindness, gentleness, meekness. But you're also going to pray for self-control and pray and pray a blessing that they would live a holy life separated from this world. Pray that blessing upon your children. Because let me tell you something. The adversary is doing everything he can to tear your children down. Everything he can to tear your children down. You better. You better be using words of blessings upon your children. By the way, if, again, if you look on verse number 21, by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed the sons of Joseph. What did he do? Blessed his grandchildren. So guess what? If you have grandchildren in this place, you're not exempt either. You need to be doing the same thing. You need to be speaking words of blessing, not curses upon your children. Speak words of blessing. Not curses upon your children. We've looked at we've looked at dads taking their kids on a children on a journey of faith. Take them with you. Let them dwell in the tents with you. We've looked at the the power of blessings in your words, Dad, and what they say. I want us to look at one more. Uh, look over at Hebrews chapter eleven. Another dad and what he did. Hebrews chapter eleven. Look at verse number seven. By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not seen. Moved with godly fear, prepared for, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. Look at what happened right there. Noah was warned that destruction was coming. He was divinely warned of something. Let me tell you something. I'm going to do that for you here today. I will divinely warn you of destruction that's going to come. Anyone who dies outside of Christ will spend an eternity in hell. Wait just a minute. I'll change that word anyone. Everyone, everyone who dies outside of Christ will spend an eternity in hell. That's a, I'm divinely warning you of that. That fact, mom and dad, everyone will. By the way, just so you know, what does hell look like? It's a lake of fire. In fact, the Word of God teaches us that it's a place of wailing and gnashing of teeth and that the pain and the agony that goes on goes on for eternity. Year after year after year. This place was so bad, it literally was built for, for Satan and his demons to dwell in. Let me tell you, it is the absolute most miserable place you could ever imagine. You would not want your worst enemy to go to this place. Do you understand this? I want to divinely warn you of the destruction that is coming. And look, and look what Noah did. Look at what Noah did whenever he, he had received this divine warning. He was moved with godly fear. By the way, when it says he was moved, that means that there was action put to the, the fear that came upon him. On a side note, I think that everyone here should be moved with godly fear to the point that they would want to warn people about the eternity of hell that is waiting for people. We all should, we all should be moved exactly like Noah was with godly fear. And what did he do? Look at what Noah did. He prepared an ark for the saving of his household. Dads, you need to be you need to be you need to be moved with godly fear. 
preparing an ark for the saving of your household, your family. Noah worked for years and years and years so that his family would be saved. Dad, you need to be doing everything you can, everything you can to make sure that your children spend an eternity in heaven. Everything you can. I don't care if you work for years after year after year. Keep working for the saving of your family. Now, I know that you can't twist their arms and you can't force them into anything, but I will tell you what you can do. You can do these three things. This is what Noah did. Look, look at what Noah did. He built an ark. He opened the door, and he pointed the way. Dad, you're called to build an ark. You're called to build an ark. What does building an ark, ark, what do you mean by that? I'm supposed to go build an ark. I will tell you exactly what it means. It means that you live a life day after day after day. You are putting plank after plank after plank, showing the example of a life that is committed to Christ. You need to be building an ark that your children can look at and say, That's a man that follows Christ. You need to set that example. You're building an ark is taking those steps of faith. Number two, point the way. He pointed the way. Dads, every opportunity you have, you need to be pointing the way to Christ. Use those little moments whenever the sun comes up and and you say, oh, isn't that sunrise beautiful? Beautiful. It's amazing what God did. And by making that little statement, you're pointing the way to God the Father. To that little three or four or five year old little child. And you keep doing it day after day after day. Then the fourth thing that he did was um, after he uh, after he opened the door, he pointed the way. Let me tell you, everybody here should be able to lead their child to Christ. Every person here Every person here should understand what it takes for someone to be saved. What does it take? Somebody has to repent of their sins and ask Christ to be their Lord and Savior. Commit their entire life to Christ and then you would be saved. Let me tell you something, dads. You should be able to tell your kids how to be saved. You should be able to, to just like Noah, make sure that they get on the ark. The ark is not the big boat that you're thinking about. The ark is Christ himself. The only way that's going to deliver you from sin and self. And dads need to be able to tell their children how to be saved. Now, let me tell you this. We've looked at three examples Abraham taking his kids on their faith journey. Isaac blessing his kids and not cursing them. And Noah leading his kids to salvation. See, we're going to have a time of invitation. An invitation is really that, that dads would be the dads that they, that they should be. That, that they are taking their children upon this uh, uh, journey of faith. And that, and, that they're, and that you're blessing your children and not cursing them. But let me tell you something. If your children don't know the Lord, if they've never been saved, then this invitation is a time for you to pray. For you to pray for that child. For that son or that daughter. That they would come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because see... You can be the best dad in the world. And you can have all the fun you want to with your kids. But if they end up spending eternity in hell, it's for naught. So moms and dads, now's your chance during this time of invitation. If you want to come and pray and you want to say, I want to be the man of God that God has called me to be. I want to take my kids on a journey of faith. Or I want to come up here and I want to pray blessings upon my children. Then I'm going to do that. Or if you've got one that's lost and you need to come pray for their salvation, then today would be a day. I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer. If we will, please rise and then we'll start this invitation. Father, Lord God, 
come before your throne and I just ask that, Father, you would move amongst this group of people. Let us realize the importance of the role that we play. And I ask this in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.